Let's now do part B, where we have the electric field lying in the YZ plane. Let's redraw the sketch of our coordinate system. I just copied this from the previous page. I'll add our rectangle, which is three units high, three centimeters high and two centimeters wide. Our rectangle still has an area vector that is perpendicular to the surface. So let's indicate an area vector that's perpendicular to the surface. That's probably pretty good. I'll add my little perpendicular symbol. So that's showing it's perpendicular to the surface. And now let's add our electric field vector. Now remember, the electric field has a component in the y direction and a component in the z direction. I'm going to just start off by drawing the, the electric field vector from the origin to help me get a good perspective. And even though the units of the electric field is different than the units of our coordinate system, I know that the Z component of the electric field is twice the Y component of the electric field. So I'm going to just use our coordinate system to help me scale those two coordinates, those two components appropriately. To do that, I see that the Z component of the electric field goes out basically double the Y component of the electric field. So I'm coming out two along the, on, along the Z, and then if I go up one along the Y, and create a parallelogram of those two components, we end up with the electric field vector being parallel to the zy plane. Well, well, if we did that, let's go ahead and move that to where our area vector is. So there. Let me move this a vector out of the way. I'll move that down here, and I'll move that over there. Okay, so there is our electric field vector. Now, just for perspective again, I'll just go ahead and redraw this. I'm going to just transfer those dotted lines to where the electric field vector is now. It had a Z component and it had a Y component. Notice the Z component of the electric field is parallel to the Z component of the area vector. Notice the Z component of the electric field is parallel to the area vector, and the Y component of the electric field is perpendicular to the area vector. That means the only component of the electric field that contributes to the flux is the component parallel to the area vector. And we can find that component by taking the cosine of the angle the electric field makes with the area vector. Before we do that, let's just talk a little bit more about this electric field. This is a uniform electric field that's crossing the surface. And I'll try and give some perspective here. And actually my, my vectors got skewed a little bit, so let me try again. So again, we have a uniform electric field However, this time the electric field crosses our 
surface, our rectangular surface. Now this doesn't give us a real good perspective of the electric field. Let's change our orientation. Let's change our orientation by looking straight down from the positive x-axis. When we look straight down from the positive x-axis, the z-axis will be going to the left, the y-axis will be vertical, the units of the y-axis, I'll just go up to three because I know our rectangle is three centimeters high. And along the z-axis, I'll go over three like this. Our rectangle is in the x-y plane. So looking at it from the positive z-axis, it's going to be right in the x-y plane. Our area vector is perpendicular to the, rect the plane of the rectangle. This will be our area vector right here. Remember the area vector is described by the area times a vector normal to the plane of the rectangle. And that vector normal to the plane of the rectangle, I'm just going to use the z unit vector k hat. And now let's illustrate the electric field from this perspective. From this perspective, remember, we said the electric field had a z component that is twice the y component. So there is our electric field vector. And we could move that vector up to the area vector for more perspective. Now this is just representing the electric field at this point. Now, if we use the electric field line model, because the electric field is uniform, we know there's actually a number of field lines that are parallel. And these parallel field electric field lines cross the surface of our rectangle. So notice we have an electric flux now. The electric flux is directly proportional to the number of field lines that cross the plane of the surface. So for this problem, we should be able to calculate a non-zero electric flux. And that non-zero electric flux is going to be based off of the magnitude of the electric field, the magnitude of the area vector, and the angle between the electric field and the area vector. Let's go ahead and calculate this now. the electric flux is equal to the surface integral of the dot product between the electric field and the area vector. The electric field has a y component and a z component. The area vector has just a z component. If we take a representative square of this area vector, that gives us the area differential. And let's evaluate the dot product between the electric field and the area differential. So the dot product would be given by the sum of the products of the components. The y component of the electric field times the y component of the area vector plus the z component of the electric field times the z component of the area vector. This means that the dot product between the electric field and, this, and the area differential is equal to 2 e naught 
times the area differential. So evaluating the electric flux, we have the integral over the surface of 2e naught times dA. Well, the electric field is a constant, so we could pull that outside of the integral. And since this is an integral over the surface, and we only have the integral of dA, the integral of dA is just A, the area. Well, let's evaluate this out. Notice, first notice that this is non-zero because the E naught is not zero and the area is not zero. So the electric flux through the rectangle for part B is given by two E naught we said was 50 newtons per coulomb. And the area vector is 6.0 centimeters squared. That means that the electric flux is equal to, let's see, that's 100 times 6, that is 600, and that's going to be to two sig figs. So we'll remember the two sig figs at the end. So that's 600 newtons per coulomb times a centimeter squared. Let's go ahead and convert from centimeters to meters. I know that for every 100 centimeters, there is one meter, and we have to square that. When I put this in my calculator, I get that the electric flux is equal to 6.0 times 10 to the minus 2. And now let's do our unit check in line. A centimeter squared cancels with a centimeter squared. And so we get 6.0 times 10 to the minus 2 newton meter squared per coulomb. We have now found the electric flux due to the electric field for part B where the electric field field lines crossed through the plane of the rectangle.